Alrighty, let's get started. Welcome everyone to the Ohio Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Ohio. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our first uh, presenter, and that's going to be Columbia College, Chicago. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now. Hopefully, you'll be able to see the presentation in the proper view. Let me know if you do not, I can swap that out for you. All right. Hopefully we're all set. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started actually. So Columbia College Chicago, we're located in downtown Chicago. Um, we have majors in the performing visual media art. Um, before I get into it a little bit more, I do wanna introduce myself, let you know that my name is Kat Lewis. Um, I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions at Columbia. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, and there's information um, that you can reach me at on the screen. Um, I specifically work with students from the state of Ohio. So I would love to get to know you a little bit more if you are actually considering applying to Columbia College. So about Columbia, um, currently we um, offer majors um, in all creative disciplines, honestly, um, with the liberal arts and business and technology also at the core of what we do as well. Um, what students typically experience at Columbia is the city of Chicago and all of its creative scenes. Um, we are literally located in downtown Chicago. Um, our main campus is across the street from Grant Park. Um, we only are about one mile long and three blocks wide, so we're not scattered about throughout the city. Um, our housing is also included within that one mile long and three blocks wide, so we want students to know um, that everything is within the central location of the South Loop of Chicago. Um, what we also offer is collaboration um, with a difference. Um, so we want students at our college actually to go across um, different mediums. Um, if you're a theater student, we want you to take business classes. If you're a dance student, we want you to take journalism classes. Um, so we don't make students fit within one mode specifically. If you have interest in various creative outlets, please, by all means, we want students to explore those. Um, we have hands-on learning at our school um, and most students within their major actually start their freshman year. So you do have liberal arts and science core curriculum classes that you have to take, which is just a fancy way of saying general education. So math, English, humanities, and social science, um, but we don't front load those classes. So that means you get an opportunity to take those general education courses at the same time as your major. So you're dancing right away or you're making films right away, um, producing music right away. We want you to get at it as soon as possible. And then we also offer networking and career preparation for students. We have a full career center on our campus that we encourage every student to utilize from day one, not to wait till you're in your senior year and you're getting ready to strike out into your industry. We want you to really get an opportunity to enjoy um, all of the services that our career center has to offer. A little bit about us by the numbers. Um, we have about 6,700, close to 7,000 students on our campus currently. 99% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid. And then 57% of our students identify as students of color um, with about a size 18 for our class sizes. Here's a list of our majors and programs that we offer. Um, we have about 100 plus. Um, there's different categories that we break them down in. We let students know that if you don't see your major listed right here on the screen right now, that does not mean we don't have it. Um, just visit column.edu slash majors for more information. So applying, I wanna give you a, a brief breakdown of how you apply to Columbia. Um, we are test free 
for admission and scholarships. We're completely test blind, so we will not be taking a look at any ACT or SAT test scores. We have a holistic review process and we're rolling admissions. So that means that we're looking at every single aspect of your application, not just one aspect. We wanna see you as an individual. Um, rolling admissions, uh, meaning that we don't have any hard deadlines, just priority deadlines for our application. We are members of the Common App, but we also have our own application at columb.edu slash apply. No preference whatsoever as to which application you to utilize. It's whatever is best for the student. Um, we do have auditions and portfolios for varying majors, mostly our BFA programs. So our Bachelor of Fine Art programs are absolutely required to submit some sort of portfolio, um, as well as some sort of audition. For our BA, our Bachelor of Arts students, they may do so as well, um, but it's not for consideration into your program. It's only for additional scholarship consideration. Um, admitted students are automatically considered for Columbia scholarships, especially the merit-based scholarships that we offer, since they are attached to um, your transcript that you're going to submit. And we do highly recommend that students submit a FAFSA. Last year, just for submitting the FAFSA, we guaranteed every student $2,000 um, just for completing that, regardless of your family's needs. So definitely do that if you can. Um, if you want to find out more information about our application process, please visit columbedu slash apply. So as I wrap up, um, I do want to thank you so much for listening to this brief presentation. Um, we're highly active on social media. We have our social media handles located on this screen right here. Um, if you're going to post anything when you're visiting our campus, please use the hashtag MyColumbiaShy. We'd love to see um, your adventures when you get a chance to visit us on campus. Um, like I said, once again, my name is Kat Lewis. Please feel free um, to reach out to me and let me know if you have any additional questions. Thank you so much for your time and have a good evening. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Uh, next up, we have DePaul University. Just realized I was muted, sorry. You would think after a year it would uh, <laughs> be better than this. So I'm Orlando Ramirez. I'm the Interim Director of Recruitment at DePaul University, DePaul with a W. Um, that is located in Greencastle, Indiana. And so I'm about to share my screen. Um, so DePaul University, like I mentioned, is in Indiana. We, we are 45 minutes west of Indianapolis. We're a small residential liberal arts university um, that has about 1,700 students, which I'll get to here in a second. Uh, DePaul is a small school in the middle of Indiana with a lot of impact in a lot of different industries. Um, uh, ranging from business, investment banking, education, um, music, and all and all other things that I'll mention here in a second. So, so these are just a, a few rankings that uh, we'd like to highlight. Right now, we are the number one liberal arts college in Indiana. We're also within the top fifty, according to U.S. News and World Reports, um, and we are the number three school. Uh, of our type that uh, for study abroad, um, because we send so many students abroad each year and also because we try to make it as affordable as possible. Now, these are some words that we have actually come up with for our students. We normally get asked, you know, what's a typical DePaul student like? What do you look for? Driven and curious and ambitious are really at the top of that. We want um, our students to be heavily involved on campus. This is not the type of school where you go to class and then we see you the next day. Um, typically your schedule is gonna be pretty packed with all the different obligations and responsibilities you'll have um, depending on your involvement on campus, whether it's athletics, the school of music, student organizations, Greek life, things like that. So as I mentioned, our school is 1700 students and they all live on campus all four years. So the average class size is gonna be around 15 to 17 students. I literally took a class with just a professor and me. So that's how small it can get. It can get. Um, but you have a choice between the College of Liberal Arts and also the School of Music uh, among your majors. They come from all over the country and all over the world as well. Each year, we have about 80 to 100 international students that come to DePauw. 
So as you can see here, we have the College of Liberal Arts and also the School of Music options. We have 49 different majors. And as you can see, those are our top, most, top 10 most popular majors. Um, I will say that when people ask me, you know, what is DePaul known for? Most of the time I will say, well, areas of business. So whether that's finance, accounting, investment banking, consulting, uh, entrepreneurialism, um, or media. We have a lot of uh, people who have gone into broadcasting and journalism routes. Um, for example, the founder of ESPN is a DePaul grad. Um, and then we have anchors uh, that work at CNN, the Today Show, um, different um, news networks throughout the country as well. Um, so, so those are the two big ones, but we really do have graduates going into a lot of different industries. The School of Music offers a lot of different um, music degree programs, um, performance being one of them. We really do have a great conservatory style uh, School of Music that, that helps students understand that they can be professionals even in, in, in the music field where they are learning to market themselves, learning how to innovate within the classical music genre, um, learning how to become music administrators, things like that. So because we are a small school, you have access to a lot of different things, mainly that education. The professors are obviously going to know your name, but they really do take an interest in it and invest in your life. So you'll constantly see students and professors meeting uh, for coffee, for lunch, um, going to students' weddings when they've graduated, things like that. And opportunities really do abound at DePaul. Um, we are an undergraduate institution. So if you want to do research, you're doing the research, not a graduate student. If you want internships, if you want opportunities to lead student organizations on campus, you don't even have to be an upperclassman. You could be a first year student and, and be the assistant editor or the editor of the school newspaper, as my intern Ian um, told me recently. So. Um, and then the alumni connections are, are really important to highlight because we do have really great alumni who have come out. I've mentioned a few. Some other alumni have been the former CEOs of General Mills, Panera Bread, Tom Shoes, the president of Starbucks, the chief financial officer of Disney, Disney Resorts, um, the former head coach of the Boston Celtics, the head coach of the men's basketball team at Clemson, so you really have access to a lot of these figures um, who come back to campus for all sorts of reasons. And you can meet them, introduce yourselves, get opportunities like internships and even your first jobs out of the law. Um, you have an international experience. We do, I already talked about how um, our class each year is very diverse, not only with our international students, but even with our domestic students of color. But we really do bring the world to DePaul through a lot of different ways, particularly through some of our guest speakers. As you can see, we have two uh, great people who have come to DePaul. We've also had six prime ministers of the UK come to DePaul. When I was a sophomore at DePaul, um, we had Bill Clinton one semester, and we also had Yo-Yo Ma the following semester. So you really do have access to some really great people here in the middle of Indiana. And then leadership opportunities are a really big thing. The last thing I'll say is that when you come to DePaul, you are actually going to be involved um, and not just be a member of a student organization or a Greek organization or whatever it may be, but you're gonna be a leader. And, and that comes out in your success even after you graduate. So um, I definitely recommend that you visit campus. Um, I will leave all the visit information in the chat for you. Um, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much for showing up today. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. All right, next up we have the University of St. Francis. All right, hopefully, hope everyone's having a great evening. Uh, my name is Kenan Abibic. I am one of the undergrad admissions counselors at the University of St. Francis. So we'll start with uh, just a quick picture of since winter is coming, a uh, quick picture of half of the campus. Um, so we are located in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is about, um, we're all, about 30, 40 minutes uh, from the Ohio border. So 
Uh, we are close, also close to Fort Wayne downtown. We're about five minutes away, which, you know, in Fort Wayne is the second biggest city in Indiana. The nice thing about that is when it comes to different events, um, you know, from art festivals to restaurants to the Greek Fest, uh, the Tin Caps, all those opportunities are there for you to be able to utilize and go downtown and hang out. Um, when it I'm comes... so sorry to interrupt. We can't see your screen. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. Can you see it now? Yes, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. All right, well, back to the picture. Um, so yeah, and then when it comes to USF, we have about 13, uh, 2,300 undergrads or students. Uh, you get about 1,800 undergrad students. You're looking at about 70, plus different majors. All of our uh, courses are taught by faculty. Uh, we don't have any teacher assistance. And like I said, that was our main campus and we do have a downtown location that houses our business and music technology. So uh, when, you, when it comes to the student uh, faculty ratio, you're looking at about 12 students to one. Uh, when I was at USF, I've had classes where I had you know three or four students in a class with me. And then something big as like a genetic course, you might get uh, anywhere from 30 to 35. You get an average size of about 17. So uh, even though we're going to be a smaller institution, uh, it does not mean you're not going to have fun, that you're not going to get a college experience. We have over, you know, 36 different clubs and organizations you can be part of as well. Uh, anything from like student government to intramural sports um, to gaming clubs, um, science club, art clubs. So many things to get involved it's a great opportunity to meet students outside your classroom. So 97% of our students that have graduated uh, have gone on to military, um, further education, or have been employed. So this is kind of the other side of uh, the campus. This is Atkins. This is our science building uh, that was uh, renovated uh, last fall. So this is the list of our majors that we offer, anything from uh, health science programs to business, uh, education, science, uh, music. Uh, we offer uh, quite a few things. So we got some pictures of some activities uh, and what campus looks like. Um, on the top left, you'll see the simulation lab uh, for nursing, you know, business, uh, finance lab on the middle right there then, and music as well on the bottom right. So when it comes to a private institution, we always think about the big sticker price of, you know, tuition. Uh, we do offer quite a few different academic scholarships. Uh, these are all based off your GPA. Um, you do not have to apply for these scholarships. When you, when you apply to the institution, you will be automatically awarded with one of these scholarships. So when it comes to athletics, we are an NAIA institution. So the nice thing about an uh, NAIA institution, it, unlike D2 and D3 schools, uh, we do offer athletic scholarships. Uh, so these scholarships would be just on top of any other scholarships that you would get uh, from those academic or anything that you would get from uh, financial aid. Uh, we do have, also have an esports team. Uh, it's like playing a sport. Uh, there's scholarships, there's practices with it as well in games. Um, for art students, we do hold a talent day where you would submit a portfolio, portfolio and you would get a scholarship based on your artwork. Um, this is our uh, football stadium. Uh, the football team won the national championship back in uh, 2016. Uh, they do really well every year. We're the only school in the area that has a football team. So we get a pretty good crowd as well. So all the students get in free to any of the um, athletic events. Uh, if you want to go catch a football or basketball game, you can always go do that. So like I said, um, there's many things to do on campus. We host about 500 different events throughout the year, uh, whether we're doing the 5K before homecoming or on our lake, we'll do canoe races. A couple months ago, they brought out a company 
uh, where we were, they set up zip lining so students were able to zip line on campus. Uh, there's intramural sports. Uh, there's definitely many field trips to different countries. Um, a couple of year, years ago before COVID, where students went to Europe and visit a couple of different countries. We also take mission trips down to Haiti. Just a couple of pictures of students on campus. And so we do have four different residential halls on campus and those are the things they include. So what's next is uh, to go on our website, uh, sf.edu forward slash apply, uh, fill out the free application. Uh, it takes only a couple of minutes. Uh, we do not require the SAT or ACT test scores only for a couple health science programs. So if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. My information is there for you. Uh, everyone enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Thanks so much. Alrighty, next up we have Kent State University at Columbiana County. County, excuse me. Hi everyone. My name is Ashley. I am with Kent State University, Columbiana County. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our campus and also the Kent campus a little bit as well. So. Um, Columbiana County is actually um, houses two Kent State University campuses, the East Liverpool campus and the Salem campus. And as you can see here, this is the regional system. So Kent um, has the main branch up in Kent, Ohio, but also numerous other regional campuses. So as a Kent State student, you can take classes at any Kent campus that you um, meet the requirements for all of the regional campuses do not have um, any admission requirements where the Kent campus does have a few, but we'll get more into that here in a minute. So why you might choose Kent State. So Kent State is ranked in the top tier list of America's best national universities by US News and World Report. We have over 245,000 alumni worldwide, um, pretty well known. And then locally at the Columbiana County campuses, we have about 2,800 students enrolled. So that's with East Liverpool and Salem. And then currently a little over 38,000 university-wide. That's gonna be the entire system. Locally, you can complete um, 28 degree options and that's bachelor's and associate's degree between the two campuses. But there are over 282 majors offered at the Kent campus. So pretty much Anything we um, do offer, we are third ranked in fashion design. Um, we have a great aeronautics program at the Kent campus as well. So the reason why a lot of students um, start locally, if there's not a degree that you might be interested in at a local campus, you might start um, to get those general education courses out of the way before you transfer up to the Kent campus. And the reason why they do that, um, one of the bigger re biggest reasons is affordable tuition. So. Our total tuition ranges between 3,375 to 5,378 um, per semester. So the Kent campus, for example, is about $23,000 a year. So it's a huge cost savings and you're getting the same world-class education from our Kent State professors. Also, you have smaller class sizes um, locally at the Columbia County campuses, about ratio is about one to 25. Um, whereas the Kent campus are, is gonna be significantly bigger. Um, the Kent campus as well requires students to live on campus for the first year as freshmen, where we don't locally. Um, you do have a tuition guarantee plan. And that means where whenever you start as a new freshman or transfer student, uh, the rate it is that year, you are locked in that rate for the four years to complete your bachelor's degree. We do have lower rates for residents that live in Northern West Virginia and Western PA because we are so close on the border. Um, what that means is you do not pay out of state tuition. You actually um, pay a very close tuition rate to our in-state tuition. It's about $700 more as well. So that is good for all of the regional campuses. A little bit about campus life. So um, each East, East Liverpool and Salem campus has an academic learning commons, which this is kind of like a student hub. It houses our library, our tutoring center, our writing center. We have peer tutoring offered as well as 
one-on-one -on -one tutoring with professors that we call Power Hour. We are actually the only campuses that offer that in the regional system. We have many student clubs from undergraduate student government to um, club specific to programs. Each campus has a Barnes and Noble bookstore where you can get all of your books for your classes that you're taking um, on the campuses. And then we have um, what we call Flashes Bistro and Cafe. So you can um, get all your dining needs here on campus. So you don't have to leave campus um, if you don't want to. We also offer a food pantry for all students. And what is great about this is we don't ask any questions about um, income or household size, just that you're a Kent State student and this is offered to you. We have counseling and wellness available. We do um, great wellness activities like free yoga for students. We have therapy dogs that come on campus. We have free lunches. Um, it's kind of a really neat opportunity for our students. And then our East Liverpool campus actually has an escape room. So it's a really neat team belt building communication skills um, event to do with your peers. And it is free for all Kent State students. And then we also have some research conferences as well, um, undergraduate research at Salem and environmental justice at East Liverpool. We have some great partnerships um, locally with some other local colleges. So if you're kind of familiar with the area, you might know of these colleges. So um, Eastern Gateway Community College, we have some pathways set up um, from their associate's degree to transfer into our bachelor's degrees. Hannah Mullins School of Practical Nursing. If you become a licensed practical nurse, you can transfer into our associate degree in nursing to become an RN. And then as well as Newcastle School of Trade. So I'm just gonna highlight the most popular degrees at the East Liverpool campus. It's the uh, nursing, which is the associate degree in nursing. And this program, um, meets, you meet the requirements to become a registered nurse. We also have occupational therapy assistant, physical therapist assistant, and criminology and justice studies. We have both the associate's degree and bachelor's degree in criminology and justice studies um, with varying concentrations as well. So you can complete 10 associate degrees and six bachelor degrees at the East Liverpool campus. And then at the Salem campus, our most popular is radiologic technology, which you might know as x-ray tech, and then radiologic and imaging sciences. This is the bachelor's degree um, where the x-ray tech is the associate. These are the bachelor's degree in radiation therapy, sonography or ultrasound, CT, MRI. Horticulture, we are the only Kent campus in the entire system that offers a horticulture degree. And we actually offer free tuition for the first year for um, new students declaring that program. And here's the admission process. So you just go on and apply at our website, submit your transcripts, fill out your FAFSA and apply for scholarships. And I'll put my information in the chat. And that is me, thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. All right, the University of Cincinnati is next. Hello, everybody. I'm Nick Rajevin. I'm an admissions counselor at UC. I'm also joined uh, by my colleague, Timothy Berry. Uh, we're, we're very excited to be here today, and we're just going to run through some quick slides with you. Um, and it's a great day to be a Bearcat. And Timothy, why don't you take it away? Yes, it's an awesome day to be a Bearcat because uh, here at UC, we have over 46,798 students, great population, uh, over 20, a little bit over 22,000 students at our uptown campus that has dispersed between our three campuses, including our graduate uh, programs as well. Uh, here at UC, we have over 350 academic programs that students can choose from with a student uh, to faculty ratio of nine, 19 to 1 and several different um student um, engagement options that students can pursue, such as the uh, University Honors Program, 13 different colleges, and exploratory studies for our undecided students. Um, we also have several different student support services uh, that we include here on campus to support you uh, as students throughout your time at UC, listed here, uh, just to show that you are able to uh, have a great uh, experience at the University of Cincinnati, while also ensuring that you're able to be fully supported and, and thriving. All right, and then uh, we pride ourselves on experience-based opportunities uh, to provide students to take the, what you learn from the classroom outside the classroom, such as the cooperative education program, internships, research, artistic performance, service learning, capstones and study abroad, co-ops, just a small brief uh, information about it. Uh, it is pretty much uh, pay station internships where you're able to earn about 15, uh, 10 to $15,000 per co-op rotation. You're not taking classes or paying tuition during that time. The students are slated to graduate with a cumulative revenue of forty dollars to $60,000 total. All right. And great thing about living 
here on campus have 16 different residence halls. 83% of students live on campus. So it's a great way for you to uh, build retention, make a lot of great friendships, strong friendships, uh, get involved with student organizations and ultimately thrive as a student. Several different dining, dining hall options, uh, all buffet style, uh, suited to all your needs. Number one recreation center and uh, great safety uh, for students. Have our own sworn in police officers, have our own ride share service called Night Ride, have our own uh, security student uh, who do detail. And you also can uh, request student escorts to uh, take you to and from your destination safely. Yeah, and you know, something that's great about Cincinnati is, is the city, right? Like we are an amazing city with uh, over 400 Fortune 500 companies in that area. Um, it's a great place uh, for an affordability option, right? You can get apartments and, and go to concerts and go to Reds games and go to Bengals games uh, and, and do all that, you know, on, on that entry level salary. Um, and that's what makes it a top 25 place for young people, right? You've got great networking opportunities. You've got a great place to live, lots of things to do. Um, it's also one of the best places for food, right? You can get anything, uh, you know, food wise in the city. And so if you're like me, you like to get that bacon, egg, and cheese on Sunday morning, go, go over to Finley Market, right? They, they can hook you up. Uh, if you want that um, Thai food, right, there's amazing options out in Oakley and, and other neighborhoods as well. And that's something that's really cool about Cincinnati. It's got a great neighborhood culture, right? So Oakley is its own feel. Over the Rhine has its own feel. East Walnut Hills has its own feel. Clifton has its own feel. So it really makes for this really dynamic city that our students are able to be a part of. Um, and, and they kind of engage with that, right? So uh, whether it's service work in the community or they're joining clubs and organizations, uh, we have over 500 clubs and organizations. And honestly, that's so cool, right? You get this chance um, to do anything that you want to try, right? If you are interested in joining our band, um, you can be that band that plays behind uh, the, the, uh, the touchdown uh, zone in, in Nippert Stadium and, and be on TV as, as ESPN is uh, panning across the stadium, right? If you want to join Greek life, um, we have lots of uh, fraternities and sororities on campus, including multicultural uh, fraternities and sororities as well. Um, and, and so for UC, we're a really engaged campus that makes us, um, that makes us come to life. It makes us uh, vibrant. Um, one of our student workers recently uh, on a panel was talking about, you know, UC students are hungry, right? They're, they want to do more. They want to get out there. And yes, they're also hungry for food, right? That's why we have buffet style dining halls and an unlimited meal plan. So you can also eat uh, as, as well. Um, and, you know, UC is a great student life uh, that comes out as well through our D1 athletics. I mean, just recently we were ranked number two by the AP coaches poll um, for football, and, and we're feeling pretty happy about that one. Um, you know, Bearcats by 90. Uh, but, you know, I think the really cool thing about it is that there's something for everyone, right? And, and I think that that's really important. If you want to be in that game field, uh, game day environment, we've got it. If, if you, that's not your scene, that's totally cool, right? We've got theater and humanities and arts and uh, slam poetry nights going on as well. Um, and, and our student government also hosts a lot of events and, and stuff going on on the weekends. Um, so, you know, if you want to go watch a movie uh, and, you know, just kind of hang out, there's that, there's that going on as well. Now, in terms of UC, right, we also have that uh, goal, right? That bear cat promise that you'll graduate with a degree, with a resume and a plan, right? And, and it sounds simple, but that's, that's what college should be. It should be simple. It shouldn't be a lot of barriers and stuff getting in your way. Uh, and so UC is prioritizing that um, through the co-op experiences, through that experiential learning that connects you to those experiences, integrates that into your curriculum so that it's not like you did school on one side, you did some internships on the other, and somehow through a crazy thing, you got a job, right? This is more your internships help feed your academic goals, your goals uh, further your professional development. And so that's what makes our students um, so desired by companies and employers. Um, you know, our students are uh, employed directly after graduation, right? Within a short time after graduation, 96% of our uh, undergraduate population is employed. They're hired by Fortune 500 companies. And what's really cool 
um, is that we don't have useless majors at UC, right? Our, our students are getting jobs in fields that are related to their major. That's not to say that um, every student is, is meant to follow the path that their major provides. It's just meant to say that, you know, our students are able to connect the dots, right? They're able to take that program of interest, things like women and gender studies, things like English, things like biology, and, and take those things to the next level. Um, and, and of course, you know, the average starting salary, that's, <laughs> I don't want to make it seem like everyone's going to earn 53000 right? Our engineers might earn a little bit more than our teachers, but nonetheless, we got, you know, our, our students are in that position to negotiate. And, you know, in terms of uh, our application, we're a common app school, only need the transcript to complete that application. We are test optional except for early childhood education and, uh, and uh, nursing, and letters of recommendation are also optional. Please get those applications in by December 1st. That'll get you considered for scholarships and uh, early admission priority. We're an in-state school, right? So we got 12,600 is our in-state tuition, room and board ranges, and our scholarships are listed here. And, and you'll be considered for those if you get that app in by December 1st. And we can't wait to welcome you to the Bearcats family. Uh, we'll drop our info in in the chat. So let us know if you have any questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, next up we have Miami University Regionals. I think you're muted. I'm not hearing anything on your end. I think we're good now. <laughs> Perfect, thanks. Hi, everybody. My name is. Oh, sorry. There we go. My name is Laura Starr. I'm an admission counselor here at Miami uh, University Regionals. Today, I also have Natalie Carley, who is my colleague with Miami University Regionals as well. She'll be kind of taking care of the chat box and any questions you might have. So if you think of anything, feel free to type it in. And that way you will be able to answer it at the end of the presentations. So we are one Miami here. We have our main campus at Oxford and then we have our regional campuses at Hamilton, Voice of America and Middletown. Overall between those three, the Hamilton, Voice of America and Middletown campuses, it is about 5,000 students or so. So we have a decent amount of population while also not sacrificing that individual attention, which is what I love about our university here. Um, our Hamilton campus kind of houses our nursing and our primary education. Voice of America is our commerce area. And then the Middletown has some of our engineering um, opportunities there. So we can talk a little bit about majors in just a few minutes. We also have our um, e-campus, which is the opportunity to learn online. We have a number of degrees that are able to be completely online, which I'll also show you in a few future slides. So the one great thing about us is we are open admission. So we're not, not looking at test scores. We're not looking at GPA for entry. We just need your high school diploma, GED or equivalency documents, and then your high school transcripts, and then you are admitted. Um, if you are a transfer student, it is kind of a different um, entry. We have 2.0 GPA minimum, and then being in good academic standing to enter. The only caveat is with our nursing program and our primary education program, we do have different uh, requirements. So that is not open in admission. We also pride ourselves on being affordable. So the average tuition for our regional campuses is about 6,700. As you can see, some of our com uh, comparison uh, traditional universities are a little bit higher than that, ranging from 10 to even 16,000. Um, so the 6,700 is even before uh, any scholarship. So it's definitely affordable. Um, the out-of-state tuition, oops, sorry. The yeah, state tuition is a little bit higher than that, as you can see on the um, slide there. We also have a, prom, a tuition promise. So once you start as a freshman, you are locked in for your uh, particular tuition. So if there's any increases, no matter how small, it will not affect your um, particular tuition. Here are some of our uh, degrees. So if you can look at the little red dot, that means that those degrees can be completed completely online. Some of our um, popular degrees are small business management in our commerce area, um, engineering technology, um, criminal justice is also a very big major for us. And then we also have our nursing, which is very popular 
and our primary education is also very popular. We do have associate degrees. So business man management technology is also one of them you can achieve with a two-year degree. Pre-kindergarten education is another one. We do have a general studies um, opportunity as well. And that kind of gives you a foundation for any kind of future career. So it's something great to think about when it comes to studying with Miami University Regionals. So we do, as a one Miami opportunity, we have the path to relocation to Oxford. So if you do have a more specialized degree that you want to see as study and as a major that we don't offer at the regionals, you do have the opportunity to relocate to Oxford after the credit hours, as you can see, and a minimum GPA of a 2.0. You also, if you are taking, say, five classes, and three of those classes are at the regional campuses, you will still be locked in for the regional rate. So you can still be taking Oxford classes and toward a major while keeping that, that rate to the regional rate if they are 51% are still at the regional campus. So we are a full body campus. We have 40 plus regional clubs and organizations, um, civic engagement. We do have a full athletics. Um, we are part of the NCAA, I believe. And you also have opportunity to study abroad. So if you don't see something that you want on campus, you can go to another place. You can even study in a different in the United States. So if you wanted to go to Chicago and study, it's still considered that kind of exchange program. And you have the opportunity to have the internship and experience in that school. And then the one great thing about, again, about one Miami is if you wanted to be something like Greek Life or some other club and organization, that is not offered at the regionals, you're able to become a part of that with our Oxford campus. The only caveat is division one sports. You are not able to be included in that. So as you can see, kind of the, again, the accessibility of the later deadlines, fall semester is August 1st, which is great. When you see spring semester, your de application deadline would be January 5th. The only kind of quick deadline would be the nursing deadline, which is the December 1st for fall of 2022, so it's coming up pretty soon. And then as some of the schools mentioned, FAFSA is very important, no matter where you come from, no matter what your background, fill out that form, it's free for everyone. And then you can get your grant money and be set for even lower tuition rates. So yeah, feel free to definitely connect with us and all of our social media platforms. And um, you can just look up Miami University Regionals and come visit us if you're in the area, so yeah. Wonderful, thank you so much. Alrighty. Well, with that being said, we have heard some great information from some wonderful folks. Um, we are going to wrap things up here. So I'd like to give a big, uh, big shout out, big thank you to all of our presenters today. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your information. Um, it was all very well put together and very fun to listen to. Um, if I was going to college, I would be I would be here. So thank you for that. And uh, participants, thank you so much for your time this evening and for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very question, very quick five question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back. I believe there's one more session. Um, so jump in, see what those are. Uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as the other recordings at strivescan.com slash Ohio. And with that, we thank you all for being here and have a wonderful night.